Hello and welcome to this edition of Exotic Ghana UK Yorkshire Chris Weekly in what feels like an autumn morning. It's very misty, it's very wet in the air, it's almost like rain's coming from the ground, the mist is that thick. But it will brighten up soon and the warmth will come and the plants will continue growing as we're well into July now. So coming up on today's episode, we'll be having a look around the garden, what's doing well, what's not doing well, looking at recent plantings and answering a few of your questions. Last week we talked about planting our most tender plants out, including house plants and also caladiums. And here's a few that I have planted out along with some colocasias. So we've got a nice dark colocasia here next to a plentranthus and also this irisene as well. And we've got a wonderful caladium here, it doesn't look brilliant at the moment, I've split it up but that'll right itself soon. These wonderful leaves. And we've got another colocasia over here, this is a peo, which will bulk up again pretty swiftly. And here we have another caladium that's flowering now, which is quite an interesting scent if you get your nose in there. Now I've been asked about gingers and hidiciums and how they grow in the garden. And this year it's been really slow because it's such a cold spring and gingers always come up late anyway. You often don't see them until June. But the most reliable ginger I've found out of all the ones I've grown over the years is this one. It's got huge leaves and it's Hedicium forestii, which has white flowers which have slightly centered, which sort of flower sort of end of August through September and sometimes into October. And it grows at least 1.5 meters, normally sort of up to 2 meters or higher and it clumps up readily and you can split and divide it and move it around your garden. So this clump here is one clump but I've got about five or six around the garden from a little plant that I got about a decade ago. Because a lot of gingers, they take a while to get going when you split them but this one just seems to thrive and just push up new stalks and new, flower, uh, new leaves and flowers pretty quickly. And it always looks healthy, it doesn't get attacked by any bugs and it just grows well in sort of part shade, sort of into sun as well. And I've grown it, like I said, six, seven plants right around the garden, and always a nice, reliable performer. All the gingers I do grow in the ground as well, but they don't grow as quickly as this one. So I'll go and show you those now. So this is Hedicium greenii, and I leave it in the ground, although you can dig it up or keep it in a pot and it's an evergreen plant basically and it'll look good in a greenhouse where it'll flower in winter. Left in the ground here, it does start flowering in sort of November, but if you get frost it normally kills the flowers. But if you do keep it indoors in winter, after the flowers are finished you'll find bubils and new plants will actually grow off where the flowers were. It can be propagated that way or they can be propagated by division. But as you can see, because it's a slow start this year, 40 centimetres tall at the moment, it will get to at least double that height by the end of the season, but much, much slower than for SCI that I've just shown you. But this is wonderful because it's got absolutely amazing red underside to the leaves and the stems. And like I said, the wonderful orange flowers much later in the year. And I do also grow Hedicium tara, which has huge flowers later in the season. But it's such a slow starter, and again, because it's been a slow start this year, we're into July now, and look, you can see one stem barely visible in the middle. It's about 40 centimetres tall. And we've got this much bigger stem here, which was doing really well, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, an animal or a stray football snapped this stem to the ground. So it's even got a, a slower start this year. So we might not get the wonderful flowers of this one and this is a Dicium tara. It is very hardy, it's just a slow plant just to get going in spring and it's had a decent amount of sun. But obviously now I've started filming this before 7am in the morning so it's pretty cool and the sun's not come round yet. 
but uh, yeah this plant's uh, had a bit of a, a fight to get going this year so out of the gingers I've shown you definitely Forestii is the hardiest the biggest quickest growing and easiest one to grow in a UK garden so I've been asked about my arid bed and here it is again obviously I'm filming this very early in the morning so the sun's not round yet but you can see the plants doing pretty well and they've grown a lot over the years since we planted these it's quite small plants so in the middle the plant that got the most damage this winter you can still see the damage there on the oldest leaves which I will remove shortly is agave americana which can grow absolutely huge and then flower before dying but this one is about what's about 80 centimeters across maybe stretching a meter a push and this one's doing well it does get damaged like you say every winter but it quickly grows it out and the center's looking totally fine in there and either side of that we've got two great big montanas this was a tiny one liter plant and this was a much bigger stockier plant probably something in like a 10-15 litre pot, something like that and they're pretty much bulletproof they do get the rain shelter in winter but there's absolutely no damage on this one even on the oldest leaves, they're still looking pristine and they're grown in pure basalt gravel and here we have the Chemerops Volcano which was grown from a very small plant again it's extremely bushy and you can tell it's a volcano rather than a humulus because it's basically hardly got any thorns on the leaf stalks or petioles. There's a few spare ones but not many and it's a nice sort of apple green colour and it's got thicker leaflets as well. So that's the Chemerops Volcano. And here's one which was at a trial which has grown really well and it's not really gets marked and this is agave lathantha not really grown as one that's very hardy but i found it to be pretty hardy here as it's never really had much damage and then finally the taller plants in the main arid bed are the yucca ristrata which we have here and we have another one which i thought was ristrata which died back a, a long time ago and these pups arrived and growing their own sort of heads now but this might be lineifolia or linearis rather than ristrata because it's got narrower leaves so we'll see how that develops and we've got the mexican fan palm the blue fan palm which is brea amata with stunning steely blue silver leaves and if we go into the center just to see how it's growing we can see the light allows you can see lots of new growth in there as well that's a wonderful very interesting looking palm that grows well if it's uh, got free draining soil but watered well in summer that will grow well and then in winter as long as we don't get a really bad winter it pulls through and looks pretty good all year round so that's the main arid bed I will go through all my plants in a future video when we do a full garden walk through but for now, thanks for watching this arid bed video. Colocasia pink chinas, they're doing really well. These are left in the ground all winter. And as you can see, this lot is looking pretty nice in the morning dew. And there's literally thousands and thousands of plants because each plant holds about two or three leaves at any one time and it sends out runners, stolons and it'll just bulk up as well by little offsets so it really likes to multiply so I'll just show you now in the greenhouse a few that I've dug up midweek and show you how they've reacted to being dug up and put into pots so here's a few pink ginas I've dug up midweek and put into pots all with a decent root system as you can see most look pretty good they've not really been affected by the lifting up process but there's a couple like this one here that's really hated it and I think we've got another one yeah another one that doesn't like it because they don't really like a lot of root disturbance and can quite quickly go down here like this but even this one where the leaves are completely folded up 
once it's uh, settled in here, it's in a tray of water, so it's definitely got enough water, but the roots just don't like being broken and dug up really, then this will grow new leaves. So in another three or four weeks, these will be nice, well-rooted little plants that will be sold at the open days, along with lots of other plants as well, which have been propagating all spring and summer. Now I want to show you my carnivorous plants. And these were left out all winter, so I saw lots of cold, wet and snow this year. And I've not really tidied them up much. I talked about tidying them up in an earlier video, and I only did a little bit of it. So I've still got quite a few of the old pictures to, to remove. But they're doing well, and it's not just the, the pictures as well, it's the also other things. We've got um, a random heather that's growing in here, which I will remove. We've also got the, the Venus fly traps. If we just look round here, we need to remove lots of these birch ceilings. But you can see the Venus fly traps, which are hardy down to at least minus five, down towards minus ten. They do go back to, to nothing in winter, with just a few winter pictures, uh, winter traps growing. But overall, they come back pretty well in spring, especially if it's really light and warm. If you grow it indoors, they grow much bigger, quicker, but I like to keep mine outdoors all winter. And we've also had flowering, so you can see the flowers just emerging on the Venus flytraps here. And the pictures have flowered as well. And if we just go down to my other ones here, loads of nice healthy pictures here. And you can see the wonderful flowers, very strange flowers held high above the foliage and these are grown traditionally in peat and perlite or peat and sort of sand and grit but I'm moving away from that and trying to go peat free so these have been grown in peat but when I repot them which I do need to be repotted I will go for a peat free option and we'll see how the plants adjust to that and see if they grow away as well as they've done in the peat that they're currently growing in so that's the carnivorous plants. Basically, leave them to it over winter. Maybe put them to some shelter if it gets really, really snowy and cold for ages. Clean them up in spring. And then as long as they've got really good light and they're kept wet, then they'll continue growing throughout the year. Now you may remember we looked at this tree fern in a previous video that had been damaged by winter and no leaves had formed. And we dug out all the black croziers, all the black damaged leaves from the centre. And now a few weeks later you can see we've got one leaf about to unfurl. And I'm happy to report we've got a full set of knuckles or new leaves in here that are ready to emerge and explode into growth. So by removing those old leaves it's allowed space for the new leaves to get ready to produce and form and make this a wonderful tree fern once again. So I've been asked what new plants have I bought this year and how it's helped develop the garden. Well in truth I've spent very very little on plants this year. I think I've spent between 8 and 12 pound on some bedding petunias just to add a bit of colour. I bought those caladium bulbs which we've seen grow into wonderful plants now and obviously I bought some seeds as well for my sort of annual colour. But apart from that I spent nothing else at all on plants so no big statement pieces, no big specimen plants or anything like that and I've got to the stage now that I've been in this garden for eight years that plants are just getting bigger and I can propagate from them and I'm not having to spend tens or hundreds of pounds on plants. I will do a video about how much I spent on all my big plants um, in the future. So you can see how much I spent on my palm trees and things like that. But for 2021, I've not spent pretty much anything. So less than, what, 30, 40 pounds combined on seeds, plants and bulbs. So hopefully the way I've arranged my plants this year and the way that I've grown things from seed and intermingle them with my sort of hardy plants that are out all year will give a good display. Like I said, we're well into July now. We've been really far behind because of that cold, cold spring we had up here and then that very dry period. But now things are starting to slowly move. We're gonna get some nice heat in the end of July into August. 
ready for my open days and hopefully by then in four weeks time five and six weeks time then we'll have lots of luxuriant growth and all the gaps will be filled out and there'll be lots of interesting plants to show you both at my open days which are in August the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. And it's Great Cliff Exotic Garden. If you go on the NGS website, that's the National Garden Scheme website, and look for gardens in Wakefield or Great Cliff Exotic Garden, you'll find the details. You can book tickets online or you can turn up on the day. We'll be selling plants at those as well. But obviously, I expect the first open day to be the busiest, but the garden will be looking at its best by the third open day because we've had more time for the plants to really grow. So, yeah, so not spent much on the garden this year, but hopefully you won't be able to tell that when you have a look around the garden, either in person or through my summer walkthrough videos. And finally, after many years of growing bananas, We've actually got some real banana fruits actually growing in the garden here. So these will swell up over the next few weeks and months and we'll have some nice tender green bananas. Thank you for watching Exotic Garden UK, your Chris Weekly. Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden.